In the spring of 1959, there was an armed insurgency in Lhasa, and although it was quickly suppressed, what really happened 40 years ago? What deep-rooted reason is there for what happened then? After the 1951 peaceful liberation of Tibet, the Chinese central government adopted a long-term aid policy towards Tibet's construction. But in view of Tibet's special history, it wasn't anxious to change Tibet's old societal regime. In 1957, Mao Zedong, in his correct handling of contradictions of various types among the people's speech, clearly expressed, Tibet's democratic reform would take place at any time when we know how to deal with Tibet's mass majority and its leaders. We can finally come to a decision about what to do. It is a job that cannot be rushed. However, change came to Tibet and the Tibetans' horizons had widened. People visiting in China were fascinated by everything they saw. At that time, Gensen Ponsok was head of the county of Dolun Dejing. He actively and enthusiastically expressed his reform ideologies with other serf owners. Some knowledgeable nobles understood that the greatest hindrance to Tibet's development was the serf system, and sooner or later the system would need to be reformed. That year, he decided to divide his land among his serfs and furthermore give them their freedom. His actions, however, were only met with dissatisfaction from diehard followers of the old system. They threatened him with death. At this time, in Sichuan, Yunnan and other Tibetan populated areas, democratic reform had started to take effect. A large number of frustrated leaders, nobles and monks, not willing to lose their privileges, and to the slave owners who feared losing their ancestral status, returned to Lhasa and pleaded with the Dalai Lama to oppose the Chinese central government and set up the so-called Tibet Independence Group. Temporarily, the American government stepped up its efforts to intervene and deal with the Tibetan situation. In 1956, the American National Security Council authorized the CIA to drive and aid the Tibetan underground activities. Their base of operations was located in the capital of Nepal, Kathmandu, from which it supported the guerrilla warfare operations. In 1958, the American financed armed insurgency operations in Shanghai area. In 1959, the insurgency had started in a place similar to this kind of location. The cause of the incident was something people simply could not have imagined. On February of that year, the Dalai Lama said he would like to visit the Tibetan military area club and see one of their new performances. On March 8th, the Dalai Lama confirmed that on the afternoon of March 10th, he would go to the Tibetan military area church to watch performance. On the night of March 9th, however, rumors spread that the Liberation Army was on its way to arrest the Dalai Lama and Tibetan government officials. A large crowd crowded around the Dalai Lama's summer palace in Nobulinka, preventing the Dalai Lama from attending the literary performance. In the morning of March 10th, thousands of armed insurgents surrounded Lhasa. They killed and hurt a few Tibetan scholars, innocent bystanders, and publicly announced Tibetan independence. Within the six days after the public announcement, the Dalai Lama was trapped within the walls of Nobulinka. During this time, he wrote three letters to three respected Tibetan personnel. On the letter of March 11th, the Dalai Lama wrote, Yesterday, I decided to go to the military area and watch a performance. But due to the agitation from handfuls of bad people and the monks barring the way out, there is no way that I can visit. I don't know what to say and am very worried. The next day, the Dalai Lama wrote yet another letter. It said, the reactionary group's illegal activities have given me immense grief and distress. 
on March 16th, the Dalai Lama wrote, At the moment, I'm employing clever methods here in the administration. In a matter of days, after I have sufficient amount of trust, I will head to the military area through secret measures. However, just on that day, the Dalai Lama, in trying to decide whether to leave or not, decided to talk to a higher being, who instructed him to leave quickly this evening. On May 17th at midnight, the Dalai Lama, disguised himself as a common armed revolutionary, escaped from Lhasa and made his way to the insurgents' home base of operations in Shannan. After the Dalai Lama had left, about 7,000 revolutionaries assembled. And in the early morning of March 20th, the armed insurgency began. Just two days later, it had ended. On the 26th, the Dalai Lama and his followers announced that the Tibetan independence group had formed into the Tibetan provisional government, after which they hurriedly fled to India. During the insurgency, the separatists also attempted to coerce some important incarnate lamas to escape. One of the people who they forced was Samding Living Buddha, Doji Pagmo, who at the time was only 18 years of age. The young living Buddha, Doji Parkmol, under the threat of the insurgent troops, was forced to leave her motherland and flee to India. There wasn't one time when she stopped thinking about her home and her family. She had decided that no matter how much she suffered, she would return to her motherland. After half a year of setbacks, finally during the autumn, she achieved her goal. She had arrived in Beijing and finally set foot once again on her motherland. In 1959, after the rebellion was suppressed, the Tibet Autonomous Region held a meeting in which, through a democratic reform, it abolished the old feudalistic serf system and adopted a peaceful land buyout policy for serf owners that didn't take part in the insurrection. July 1st on the Tibetan lunar calendar is Tibet's most important day, the Shaotun Festival. On this day, Norbo Linka is bustling with noise and excitement. People from all around come and take part and enjoy the Tibetan games. The Norbo Linka was regarded as the Dalai Lama's summer palace, as a place common folk were forbidden from entering. After 1959, Nobulinka's Park and the Shaotun Festival become two pleasures that all Tibetans can enjoy. <laughs>